There was a time when everything from coal to groceries would be delivered to your doorstep. The milkman would bring your milk, the paper boy would deliver your newspaper, and the postman would drop off your mail, sometimes twice daily. Congratulations or sad news from afar would come in the form of a hand-delivered telegram. Milk wagons, bread wagons, ice wagons, and honey wagons were a common sight on Saskatoon streets. Doctors and nurses would make house calls. Before electric refrigerators, the ice man would deliver blocks of ice needed to keep ice boxes cool. Coal and wood would be delivered to feed the furnaces and stores of Saskatoon homes. Home delivery was a common service. The drivers who made the regular door-to-door -door deliveries were known by name. So were the horses, who were as well known in the neighborhood as their drivers. Trucks and vans would replace the horse-drawn wagons, and by the end of the 1950s, home delivery would fall into decline. The iron coal chutes and milk chutes or cupboards on some Saskatoon homes are testimony to a rapidly disappearing part of the city's social history. Photographs in the local history room collection show a time when something as large as a house would often be moved to a different site rather than being demolished. The ultimate in home delivery. Join us in remembering the time when bread and milk and even babies were home delivered. Small dairies in the early years of Saskatoon purchased plain milk bottles from glass distributors as they were very inexpensive. Smaller operations did not bottle their milk but sold it from milk cans. Henry James Kahn, the owner of the Jersey Dairy, farmed near Saskatoon in the Eagle Creek area. The dairy, a barber shop, a pool room, and a bowling alley were other ventures Kahn pursued after farming and before moving to Kelowna. In 1911, Harold Cosford's first job was as a driver for R.F. Preston's 2nd Avenue Butcher Shop. Cosford had come west in 1910 to make his home in Saskatoon. Richard Freeman Preston had come from Manitoba in 1906 and opened his first store on 20th Street. By 1911, Preston had three shops at 261 2nd Avenue, 817 Broadway, and 117 20th Street West as well as his own slaughterhouse. He employed some 20 men and operated delivery rigs from each market. In 1914, Preston would sell out to the Sterling Meat Company. At that time, he had six butcher shops as well as a large retail store in Sutherland. R.F. Preston would die of diabetes in 1915 at age 48. In April 1913, when Arthur Rose opened his dry cleaning business at 624 20th Street West, he discovered that driving a horse and wagon was not something he could do well. Philip Moner, a farm boy, was hired as the company's first driver. He is seen here with the delivery horse George. Arthur Rose can be seen at the far right under the company slogan, If Rose cleaned it, it's C-L-E-A-N. Unless they were connected to the city's water mains, some Saskatoon residents had to rely on sprinkler or water wagons for their water supply. In 1911, at a rate of six barrels of about 40 gallons each for a dollar, the extra cost could be prohibitive. Outbreaks of typhoid and disease had prompted the health department to close all city wells. Contamination by sewage had rendered the water not fit for consumption. Despite the construction of two water towers, the city often had problems in supplying water to its citizens. Water wagons would continue to service outlying parts of the city until well after the war. Buildings being moved along Saskatoon streets were a familiar sight as W. W. Jackson the building mover hauled them out of the way of new development and on to different locations. William Wilson Jackson had begun a moving business in 1911, known as Jackson & Harrison, but would form his own company in 1916. 
During World War I, he sometimes moved as many as 300 buildings a year. Many citizens found opportunity to establish new homes from buildings moved by Mr. Jackson, as is shown by this house being moved along 33rd Street near Avenue A. At his funeral in 1943, it was said of him, he created good and beauty out of what had been abandoned, making it beneficial to his fellow men. When Thomas Dawes purchased the City Carpet Cleaning Works in July 1916, he advertised in the Daily Star that, We call for and deliver your carpet within 24 hours. One dollar will clean ten square yards. Repairs a specialty. Over the years, the promise and the service would be maintained by the family firm. Three of the Dawes children, Fred, Francis, and Mary, ride in the back of their dad's delivery vehicle. To get a railway telegraphy job, an operator had to transmit 20 words a minute in Morse code and pass a medical and railway rules test. Among the men grouped around the table with calligraphy equipment was CPR agent John Matthews. He, along with the other men, were in Saskatoon in 1919 taking a telegraphy course. Telegraphists in the early years served as unofficial news sources often sending the first word of significant local events. Home and Central Bakeries were the bakers of Golden Crust and of Snowflake Sanitary Wrap Bread, the new loaf with the old home taste. Charles Nash and Ernest Ross, who had operated the downtown Central Bakery, in 1922 purchased Home Bakery in Nutana and combined the names. In addition to the shown location at 722 Broadway Avenue, branches were located at 226 Second Avenue South and 222 21st Street East. By 1928, the initial two delivery wagons had grown to nine wagons on the bread route and two motor trucks. Shortly thereafter, the business was sold to McGavins Limited. Each year, Star Phoenix Carrier Boys were honored for their service at a banquet. The young boys were not only fed, but were also presented with prizes. Some of the prizes are displayed on the table in this unknown banquet room. Herbert Hammer established his messenger service and parcel delivery business in 1929. With a small office downtown, Hammer would deliver parcels on his motorcycle from his residence at 1521 Avenue E North. The business would last until 1932, when Herbert Hammer became a driver for the Black and White Cab Company. The drivers and trucks outside the Builder Supply and Fuel Company Limited building at 419 23rd Street West are ready to deliver the coal and wood needed to feed Saskatoon's furnaces and stores. The company was started by Robert L. Miller in 1932 to supply lumber and fuel. Before natural gas heating, wood and coal were household necessities. As the side of the trucks indicate, Builder Supply and Fuel Company dealt in blue flame coal. The company would move to Sutherland in 1959. Sam Christopher was a self-employed businessman. One of his early ventures was the delivery business. In 1934, Christopher would establish Our Delivery Service on 2nd Avenue North. He would operate Our Delivery until 1943, when he opened a White Rose service station. Among his early drivers was a young Fred Dawes, who would drive for our delivery in 1935 before becoming a truck driver for Bowman Brothers. As early as 1911, Wilmot Watson, one of Saskatoon's first taxi operators, bought a shiny new touring car for his auto livery business. 
In 1935, when George Nesbitt and his brothers, Jim and Roy, would purchase the Grey Cab Taxi Company, there were five taxi companies in Saskatoon. Nesbitt would run the taxi business for some twenty years. During that time, he would sponsor the champion Grey Cab Rambler Ladies Softball Club. The September 11, 1952 edition of the Star Phoenix commemorated the 50th anniversary of the Star Phoenix and the 70th anniversary of the City of Saskatoon. To help deliver the 104-page special edition, Star Phoenix delivery boy Jim Ferguson hired five helpers for his university drive route. Jack Gilliland, Wendy Wedge, Ian McLean, Reg Ferguson, and Tim Ferguson help deliver the big paper to the readers. In 1952, Saskatoon had five milk dealers. These included Hills Dairy, Palm Dairies, Purity Dairy, Saskatchewan Cooperative Creamery, and Silverwood Western Dairies. Many of them had horse-drawn delivery wagons for their residential customers. The last of the horse-drawn milk wagons disappeared from Saskatoon streets in 1962. Their departure saddened the hearts of many. Some customers even asked to buy the horse on their route when mechanization took over. In her navy uniform and with her sturdy black bag, the VON nurse is off to give bedside care to the ill and the aged. The Victorian Order of Nurses was established in Saskatoon in 1912, when the Hospital and Benefit Society decided to affiliate with the VON. An indispensable nursing service, the Victorian Order of Nurses made possible the care of patients ill at home or unable to pay the cost of private nursing. When Robert M. Pinder bought out the interests of the Saskatoon Drug and Stationery Company in 1917, he began a family enterprise that would last some 80 years. The company would expand to many locations, each of which provided complete drug service. Advertisements promised accurate and prompt prescription service with phone and delivery service, as well as a shipping department to take care of out-of-town orders. Pinder's 1954 delivery van is parked on 25th Street at Kinsman Park. The horses who delivered the milk to Saskatoon homes were often as well known in the neighborhood as their drivers. Braving his last winter pulling a milk wagon, Roy the horse did not fail his customers on the morning of December 21, 1961 when he and his driver, Ted Shields, braved the sub-zero temperature at 13th Street and Cumberland Avenue. At the time, Roy was one of 21 horses still being used by the Saskatchewan Cooperative Creamy for delivering milk. In August 1976, Kristen Hauser was one of the volunteers delivering hot meals to the elderly and disabled people for the Meals on Wheels program. Meals on Wheels had been started in 1967 by the Diocesan Board of the Anglican Church Women as a centennial project. A volunteer-based food delivery program, fresh hot meals are delivered Monday to Friday and frozen meals for the weekend. The service not only provides one hot, nutritious meal per day for the elderly and disabled, but also serves as a link to the outside world. Newspaper carriers have always been innovative in the ingenious methods used to deliver the newspaper on time. Paperboy Todd Jansen, 13 in July 1980, took advantage of the fad for roller skating to deliver his newspapers in a novel way. Jansen said that he could easily deliver 40 papers in 20 minutes when he really got the wheels rolling. Letter carrier service in Saskatoon was begun in 1909 
with six mailmen covering the entire city. One letter carrier delivered mail to all Nutana. One carrier covered the city park district up to Queen Street, and two others served the downtown business and commercial district. Two mailmen were responsible for the west side of the city. By 1984, the Saskatoon Post Office employed 464 people. One of these employees was city postal worker Greg Regal, seen delivering mail in January 1985 when the temperature hovered around the minus 35 degree mark. We hope you enjoyed our virtual recreation of home delivery. The original show was held from February 1st to March 11th, 2010, curated by Ron Jeremko with the assistance of Local History staff. We invite you to visit Local History the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Library.